Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for joining me on another episode of Beers for Build. I'm Chris. We're back working on the FJ. In this episode, let's see, we're going to do a three inch lift kit provided by Rough Country. We are, time provided, we're going to do um, an extension on the fender flares. There's some fender flares that kind of bolt up a little bit higher, give you a little bit more wheel clearance. And uh, we're going to do a new stereo install. It's a beautiful day today, so I'm really happy to be working outside. I can't wait to get started. Oh, also another thing, at the end of this episode, we're gonna be doing the biggest giveaway that we've ever done on Beers for Bill. So tune in for that. Let's get started. This is the three inch lift kit that is provided by Rough Country that we're gonna be installing today. It comes with some awesome instructions, which is good. I actually printed off another set at home, but so now I got two sets of instructions. Um, springs, struts, uh, strut spacers, all sorts of great stuff that I'll get into later. First thing that we gotta do is go ahead and uh, we're gonna loosen up all the lug nuts on this wheel, uh, raise up the car, put it on jack stands, and uh, take that wheel off so we have access to that whole area right there. Okay, we've got the wheel and tire off, car's up on jack stands, so we're safe. First, so it's time to start following the instructions to kind of disassemble that, because we need to get this guy out of here, I believe. Uh, so the first thing that the instructions say to do, so here you have your steering rack uh, and your outer tie rod, comes down to here, and you, this is the bolt, it's very hard to see because it's in the dark, but this is the bolt that connects that to your uh, knuckle. Um, so we gotta pop this cotter pin out of here and unbolt this, uh, use a little bit of hammer to negotiate it out of there. We'll pop that off and kind of put it to the side. Okay, with that done, you're gonna see something like this. Uh, I had to use quite a bit of force with a hammer on here, just kind of banging around on here to loosen this thing up, and then and then one or two taps on the top here. Uh, you want to be careful, but it, it will take some force, so be realistic. Um, so the next thing that we got to do here is this is your sway bar, and we need to. Um, there's a lot of work around this knuckle because we have to kind of drop this knuckle down. Um, so the sway bar is attached to the knuckle here and here and the instructions say to disconnect it right here. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to come in. It's a 17 millimeter bolt on the back side of here and unbolt that and kind of pop the sway bar linkage out. Okay, so things got a little bit tricky in the background here. The sway bar is right there, you can see. Now when the car is just jacked up on one side, that sway bar is under a lot of pressure and it won't pop off from that linkage. So you need to have the whole front of the car jacked up, which is something that I didn't do in the beginning. Um, and now I'm working on uneven ground that's soft, which is like really dangerous, really sketchy. So don't do this at home. Um, I'm definitely not sticking any body parts really underneath this car. Uh, you have to just assume that it may fall at any second, even though it's, it's pretty sturdy. I got two jack stands on that side, two jack stands on the other. So uh, proceed with caution, but when you get into this project, don't do it like I did. You either gotta find a shop or find some flat pavement, a driveway, something flat though. Um, and yeah, the whole front has to come up evenly. But once I got it evened out, leveled out, that sway bar was no longer under pressure and it popped off real easily here. The next thing the instructions are saying to do is to take off this um, bracket right here that basically just seems to hold the ABS line in place uh, correctly, like an ABS sensor line in place. It's this thing right here. There's a 12 millimeter bolt underneath. So I'll go ahead and pop that off and then we gotta go up here and we're going to the top of the strut and we're gonna go ahead and take all of those bolts off the top of the strut. You can see that that bracket is now freed up and then up here all those bolts are off. So the next thing we gotta do is put a jack stand underneath here and then we're gonna go after this bolt right here and pull that cotter pin out, remove that bolt, hammer on that a little bit and that's gonna allow this whole unit to drop down which is gonna then free up our strut. All right, things got a little confusing for me for a second, but in the end I got it all figured out. So, um, take off the nut from that, hammer it down, this knuckle thing will fall down. Um, grab a C-clamp or something like that so you can hold this knuckle close to the body of the car so you're not pulling on any of these wires or your brake lines. Um, next thing is your uh, strut is gonna be in here like this. The bottom of that is gonna be bolted in right there. Slide that bolt out. And then, um, now in the instructions, I, it said to remove some sway bar bolts, but it was kind of generic. So I took the sway bar bolts off of the linkage, and obviously the sway bar didn't go too far, but you know, you don't really know what they're talking about until you go and do it. I think what they meant was remove the sway bar bolts from the frame. Um, so my strut would not come out of here until I removed the sway bar bolts from the frame, which then you know gives you some play with the sway bar. I moved the sway bar down, and then the strut completely fell out. So now, uh, we have this strut out of the car, and it's time to go put the uh, riser on it, or the spacer, whatever you want to call it. That guy right there goes on top of this.
All right, well, if that looked like that was ridiculously hard and things got stupidly complicated, they absolutely did, and um, here's why. It doesn't say on the instructions that you need a spring compressor, but you need a spring compressor. Um, what that is is something that will latch onto there, and it tightens down, and it will compress that spring, because when this lower control arm uh, drops down at its furthest point, it will not, well at least on my car, there's some bushings inside there that makes it not want to just swing all the way down and hit the ground. Um, so this is as low as it goes. Uh, once you add in that massive spacer, getting that spring, that strut back in there to fit in there is ridiculously hard. So here's what I did. Um, this, is my, this is my ride for today. This is all I have to drive. So um, I couldn't just wrap it up and head down to the hardware store or the auto parts store and get a spring compressor. By the way, most auto parts stores that have the spring compressors uh, will rent you one for free. You can just borrow one for the day. So uh, check that out. And I'm gonna go get one right after this. But anyways, <coughs> so what I did was I took hose clamps and hose clamp the spring down, tighten them down until they start skipping, meaning they start breaking apart. Um, that brought the spring up, I don't know, about a half an inch. Then I used all my power to slam that thing into the hole that it needs to go into. And then because it was pressing down, basically the holes didn't line up. So I took some metal, used it as a shim, hammered it in there, that shimmed this thing up a little bit more enough to get the bolt in there. And now I can pull these things out. It'll be hard, but they'll come out. So, um, yeah, very, very difficult. With the spring compressor though, it would have been very, very easy. So I, like I said, I'm gonna go get a spring compressor. But first, it's reassembly time. So uh, everything goes back in kind of the way it came off and uh, we should have our first raised section. Okay, all the suspension components are assembled. Um, this took me way, way too long to do. So I started at 12.30. It's now, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes till five. Uh, it shouldn't have taken that long. Here's the things I got stuck on. I got stuck on the spring. I really could have used a spring compressor before that. I got stuck on the sway bar. Um, also, <coughs> me working on this uh, out here on the ground was not a good idea. We should, you, flat concrete would be way, way better, um, which we'll see is gonna be a problem in a second. The last thing though was also that I needed a um, tie rod end, uh, uh, I can't remember what this tool is called. I think it's called a ball joint separator. And so you can, it's a tool that works both ways. You can either use it to tighten these things together or you can use it to separate the two. And uh, what I would be using it for is it has two prongs that comes down and it tightens these two things together, pushes them up together. That'll stop the bolt inside this thing from spinning so you can get the nut on there tightly. So I was fiddling around with stupid vices or, or little C-clamps or whatever you want to call them. And it was a bad idea and I should have had that tool with me as well. So two things that I would recommend for this installation is a um, spring tensioner, spring tightener, compressor, whatever you want to call it, and a ball joint compressor thing. Uh, so fun times uh, for the last trick. Um, it's going to be really fun is I think that my jack maxes out at not much higher than that. And now we've pushed the suspension down much further than it was before. So we got to figure out how to get the truck up even higher so we can get this wheel on. But uh, it's got to get done if I want to drive home. So here we go. All right, well, one side's done. You can definitely see visibly larger gap. Um, awesome. So while it's driving right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take it down to the auto parts store and rent a spring compressor. And it's gonna be dark here in a couple of minutes. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set up lights and off camera, I'm gonna do the other side. That'll wrap up the front and then tomorrow we can focus on the back. guys back for day two so uh, day one went really well the weather held out which it is not going to today I know it looks nice right now but it's gonna start raining on me which means that I'm gonna be crawling around in the mud which is gonna suck but that's what we got to do um, it took much longer than it was supposed to but that was definitely on me uh, I obviously don't have a professional shop out here so I don't have the right way to lift the car and everything as well as you know I didn't have all the right tools that I needed but the second one went about twice as fast as the first one if that tells you anything so uh, somebody that's done this more than one time in their life the only other thing that I've done that's kind of similar to this is I've done lowering knuckles on the Camaro. That's kind of similar, but very different than SUV suspension. Anyways, uh, it's time to jump into the rear. So uh, 
Oh, also I did want to say though, I've driven the car about 30 to 40 miles between yesterday and today, and it's been performing great with just the front lift on there so far, so that's good. Um, but in this episode later, we'll have a much more comprehensive review because we're going camping. We're going to drive it all the way up to the mountain. So um, it's time to get started on the back. We got to lift up the back while keeping the axle kind of independent because that's got to be able to drop down. Uh, get the back wheels off, get the car up safe, and then we can get to work. We're going to be installing new springs and shocks is all that's left in the kit. Let's get started. Alright, we got the back all lifted up. The weather has started. It looks like it'll just be a short shower though. It's my hope at least for now. Uh, so the next thing we got to do is remove, just by looking at this from where it stands right now, um, I'm struggling with height of these jacks and jack stands and stuff, getting this thing up high enough. So you might want some really tall SUV jacks and stuff. I'm not used to this stuff because I always work on cars. Anyways, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to lower this down far enough. I hope this is going to get us far enough down. Anyways, uh, we got to remove the shock. So there's a bolt up there, and there is a bolt right back there that you're going to see. Um, and those two got to come out, and hopefully then the shock will come out without too much trouble. All right, we got the shock out without too much trouble. Um, there's a bolt up there that's really, really hard to get to, and then the shock cylinder kind of wanted to rotate with the bolt, so what I had to do is put a pair of vice grips on, on the shock cylinder. Since it's a junk shock anyways, you don't have to worry about it too much. And that uh, should keep it still. The next thing we gotta do is remove the sway bar. I went for the bolt on this backside already. Sorry, the nut, and um, the nut was spinning the, the inside of this tie rod, so you gotta get an Allen wrench on the inside of the bolt on the backside, and then use a wrench, and that'll uh, let that off. Once that's off, then this thing should sit down enough that we can get that spring out of there. All right, progress is flying compared to uh, yesterday. So um, here's what we did. We took the sway bar off, the sway bar linkage, unbolted that. I had to jack this up a little bit to relieve a little bit of the pressure from the sway bar, pop that linkage off. Then this slowly, slowly lowered it down. And then we, uh, the stock spring basically just fell on out of there. And then we took the new spring and placed it in there. Now I had to place a little bit of weight on this to kind of press it down a little bit. This is where they said you might need a spring compressor on the stock spring, but I was able to do it by just uh, leaning on this a little bit, I actually sat on it to be honest, sat on it and then wiggled that spring in there. Compared to the front, this was actually way easy to fit in. The fronts were way, way harder than this. So that's in there and we're basically, well, now we're buttoning up this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise this back. Now the instructions say, go to the other side and get the other side to this point. But um, because I'm not super happy with the way that this car's standing and the jack stands and everything, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and button up this side as far as uh, putting the sway bar back in and then yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do the shock too. So I'm gonna do the sway bar and install the shock and get things kind of buttoned back up to stock. And then I'm gonna go to the other side. So basically reassembly at this point. Okay, that's this side done. Everything looks great. Everything went back together great. So I'm gonna go ahead and now pop over to the other side, get the other side done, and then I think what I'm gonna do is throw the jack under the rear diff, lift up that axle a little bit, and get the wheels back on. Um, let's see, I'll get the other side done and then we'll do a quick review. Okay, we got both sides finished up, so that's the side you saw before. And coming around the back, this is the other side, completely done. Um, this side gave me more of a fit with the spring. I think it's because of that cross member bar there. Uh, but I got it in there without too much trouble and it's all wrapped up. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm gonna throw that jack kind of underneath that rear axle, maybe even on the rear diff and just compress this up a little bit. That'll give me enough room to get the tires on. And, uh, and then we're done. And I'll show you guys the lift. All right, 
well there we go that's our three inch lift kit installed you can see that it looks great our clearances are way better than they were when we started uh, i'm very excited i think this looks amazing i drove it around the block it feels great so far but uh, i'll let you know more about how it performs we're going up to the mountain before the end of this episode i expect snow and obviously lots of miles of driving so we'll tell you more about it in a little bit later i wanted to do the new fender flare install but uh, we just don't have enough time yesterday i kind of got behind schedule so we're going to shift gears jump on the inside and start with the stereo install all right, let's get started with the stereo install. So please don't mind all the tinkering sounds. That's just the rain hitting the roof. Um, so this, this head unit is pretty good overall. I, I don't have a lot of issues with it. The only problems is that I have with it really are that it doesn't have Bluetooth because it was made in like 2007 or eight or something. I can't remember what year this car is. And the auxiliary port right here uh, is worn out. So basically if you like jiggle this around, uh, you'll, you'll, your connection will come in and out. I am also an iPhone 7 guy. So to use this and to be able to charge my phone, I have to use this like double dongle thing and it often doesn't even work. So what I'm really trying to do is get this thing to be running Bluetooth so I can use a standard charger on my phone when I'm traveling around. Um, to the first step for this, I, I've never done this on this car, but uh, I've seen something online about, I don't know, six months ago. Uh, I think the first step of this is there's a screw underneath here and underneath here that we're gonna go ahead and take out, and that will uh, take this frame off of here, and then we can probably pull this piece off, which will let us take our stereo out. All right, stock stereo is out. It's pretty simple. Phillips head uh, under there and under there that allows you to pop off those side things. And then we had a Phillips head right here and right here that allowed me to take the blue thing off the trim. And then um, four bolts that were 10 millimeter bolts, one here, here, and there, and there. Uh, take all those off and you can take your stereo off. Now these side uh, hinges here, hopefully we'll be able to reuse these with the new stereo. I'm not totally sure. But if not, I have this kit over here. So that's the next thing we're kind of playing with is this is a uh, just, I Googled this, I highly recommend buying one of these. You don't have to, you can cut these wires to wire them into your new um, uh, stereo, but you don't have to. You could also uh, buy one of these kits. And what this is, is this has a bunch of brackets and stuff that should help me mod like um, bolt the stereo into the dash nicely. What it also comes with is these wiring harnesses. And what these are, or wire plugs, I don't know what you would call them, but they plug into the stock uh, thing like right about here. And then it has some instructions onto what colors uh, every pin is and where they go. So it'll have like the purple one goes to the left front, you know, speaker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have one for this and one for this, and I don't know what this is. I hope that doesn't run us into any problems. But uh, so the next thing I'm gonna do is unbox our new stereo. Go ahead and pull that out, start playing with the wires and start playing with these wires and see where we can get. All right, I formulated a game plan. I think it's about time to get to work. So unfortunately I lost all the instructions on this stereo, but luckily it has this awesome wiring diagram on the back here. So there is a plug that looks like this. And inside this has, this part right here has basically all the key components that I need. So I pull, I'm gonna pull all these pins out of this. I think this is just some generic thing that they were hoping would work on my end. So I'm gonna pull this, um, pull that apart, plug that into the back of this and wire that basically into these two things right here. Um, so hopefully these two things will go into that and that will get the stereo working properly. Um, here we have GPS, which I'm gonna install. I'm just gonna put the GPS antenna in there. We have our radio antenna, which I'm gonna put right in here. Wi-Fi antenna, I guess, is this tiny little wire right here. And um, on here is a bunch of auxiliary options, which I think I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the USB. I don't know if I'm gonna route it out anywhere yet, uh, but it might be good to have in there. I'm not really sure. I haven't made up my mind yet on USB because I really want to be using Bluetooth and I don't like using USB to charge my phone through the stereo uh, because the stereo often gets confused and starts to try and play music off of your phone's audio library rather than playing it um, over Bluetooth. So this is what the uh, USBs look like and the jury is still out, but I can basically plug them in here if I want to and maybe run one out this auxiliary port right here or I could take any one of these out and kind of just pop one of these free through here. All right, so there's a lot of wiring to do, a lot of splicing of all this, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so wiring is all complete. Uh, I used these uh, butt crimp connectors. I decided to go with those. I've, I hear they're better than soldering and stuff like that for things that can be shaking around a lot and different things. So since 
inside here might be shaking quite a bit when we're going over bumps and whatnot. I figured let's use those. Plus they're a little bit easier. So I got really lucky. My, um, this is that kit that I bought on eBay. By the way, that only cost me $15. So it saved me a lot of time. I think it's definitely worth it. Um, and these wires completely color matched what came from the stereo. So it's basically just match the colors and plug them in. I also read the paper to verify uh, with what's on the back of the stereo, but I got lucky. So I would recommend trying to find one of those online because if not, you can see that these colors don't exactly match up with what we have down here. But if not, and you got to cut these ones, then what I would do is get online and find a pin diagram for your stereo. Most cars, they'll, the information will be online if you Google around. And then you can find out like, okay, well, what does this pink one go to? Well, it actually goes to blue. Oh, okay. Um, so, that's all plugged in. This is leftover. I don't know what it goes to. I don't know what it did. I don't really care. Uh, there's a lot of like further options that these things go into, like key one settings, key two settings, reverse when the car is in reverse for reverse cameras, and a bunch of jazz that I'm not going to be installing, and I assume that's where a lot of that goes. Uh, but let's go ahead and give it a test run. So I'm going to throw the key in the car and turn the car onto basically on, and let's see. Okay, stereo starts right up. Uh, it's probably take a minute to boot up. Uh, let's give it a second and see what it looks like when it started. All right, the music you hear is coming through the stereo. Everything looks good. Uh, I don't know how to work an Android. That's one small problem, but the you know the controls are controls are working. We could skip songs. Whoops. I can I can answer my phone. I guess home. Uh, right. So this seems to be working just fine. Uh, I gotta learn how to use Android so I can like program the clock and everything else like that. So just to verify that the key's working, I'm gonna turn the car off and we should see that the stereo goes off. Powering off, shutting down. Perfect, cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna run the USB cables down and I'm also going to um, figure out how to mount this thing correctly back in the dash and then we'll button everything back up. Okay, we got the stereo fully installed. Uh, I ran the GPS uh, antenna back there, standard antenna back there, the USBs, I ran them down and out the auxiliary port since we won't need that anymore. Uh, or at least I don't think we will. Um, and here we are. So I tested it out, it works, everything sounds great still. Um, the only thing I'm a little bit bummed about is that the stereo doesn't fill up the entire spot here in the dash. There's these little side pieces that are left over. And uh, so the kit that came, it came with a big bezel that comes around the side here, but it, it didn't actually fit around the stereo. So I trimmed the sides off of it and just used the sides, but they're kind of coming at contradictory angles. So I may um, just take the stereo and slant it back a little bit. That'll make a meet up here and here with that. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna use it for a little bit first. Um, but yeah, everything sounds good. There's one more test I wanna do. So let's drive to somewhere with some Wi-Fi and let's see how the internet works. All right, I couldn't find too good of internet, so I can't watch a video. But we can browse and we can like BS for Build videos, so that is a win in my book. It's crazy, we got 176,000 subscribers now. The last time I did an Android stereo install, we had 10,000 subscribers. All right, let's head off to the mountain. Hey, what's up, guys? It is the next day from the last clip that I shot, and I probably look like hammered shit because I have been up since like four in the morning or something. Um, I'm at the hospital. We were supposed to be going camping and uh, we're not now because unfortunately Chelsea's in there. She's about to get discharged. So last night Chelsea got really sick. She, we went out to dinner and then at like 4 a.m. she got super, super sick from something she ate. And it got bad enough that she wasn't being a baby at all. It got really, really bad that we had to go to the hospital to get fluids and stuff like that. So um, she's going to be okay. Luckily, uh, it's just like a, the worst case of food poisoning I've ever heard of or ever seen in my life. Um, so going up to the mountain is canceled. Um, the little test drive that we're going to do is canceled. I can tell you so far that the lift kit is going great for driving to the hospital and, um, the stereo is a lot of fun and things are working. Um, but obviously the, there's more important stuff going on right now. So our camping trip has been canceled. Um, Chelsea reads all the comments. So if you guys want to leave her a comment, wish her well, wish her getting well or whatever, um, leave a comment below and she'll read them. Uh, I took a couple pictures of her in, in the ER. Uh, she loved that. 
by the way. So um, that's what's up. I mentioned at the uh, beginning of the episode that we're doing the biggest giveaway. I'm just going to wrap up the whole episode now so I can spend time with Chelsea and helping her get back on her feet. Um, so that's the end of this episode. Um, but there, well, it's not quite the end. There's a giveaway and uh, I want to thank a couple people. So uh, big thanks to Rough Country. There will be a link in the description for this lift kit. So far, so good. It's been really, really cool. Um, and uh, you guys, uh, I wanted to give you guys an update on the tires, the Treadright tires. Uh, they've been going great. We got 700 miles on them so far and uh, so far so good. The response um, from the viewers uh, with Treadright was really, really positive. They were very, very happy and they're so happy they were like, you know, let, let's give back to the fans a little bit. Um, let's do a giveaway. Let's give away a set of tires. And I thought that was amazing because that's an extremely valuable giveaway. Um, it's definitely the most valuable giveaway we've ever done on the channel. So we're going to give away a set of tires. The way it's going to work is um, head over to Treadright, uh, Treadright's website. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, head over to their website, find a set of tires that you need, that you have that fit your vehicle on their website, um, and leave a comment below of the size and the model of the tire that you want, and we will pick one of the commenters that we will contact, um, myself and the rep at Treadright will pick somebody, and uh, one person will win, and we will contact you through YouTube, and uh, like your YouTube messenger, we'll contact you through there and organize it. Now the one thing that I'm gonna say is there's only one rule for this, is they have to fit your car. So if you have something, if you have a vehicle that can use tread right tires, um, absolutely do this. If you don't have anything, you don't have any friends or family or anything like that that can't fit them, uh, don't leave a comment. Um, and I want to see a picture of you with the tread right tires that I'm going to post to our Instagram and our Facebook. Because a lot of times we do these giveaways and it kind of just goes off into space and nobody really posts anything from them. So I want to see a picture of you with the tires when we send them to you. And um, that's the requirement. So uh, yeah, guys, head over to their website, check out all the models, check out everything they have available, and uh, leave a comment. Oh geez, I hope we're not like looking in patients' rooms over here. Um, anyways, leave a comment of uh, which tire and what size is right for your vehicle, and we will pick the winner and um, reveal it shortly. Uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, thanks so much. If you're interested in the FJ and you, you like this FJ build that we've been working on, um, we got plenty of FJ shirts in the shop, so uh, if you want to help support, head over to bsforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop, pick up a shirt or a hat or a key tag or something like that. You can also find us BS for Build on Facebook and BS for Build on Instagram. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry this one kind of went a little bit sideways, but obviously sometimes there's more important things in life than playing around with cars. So, uh, all right, see you guys in the shop in the next one. Peace. Come, 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 come on.